everybody. Okay, so this is going to be my special part for <clears throat> my episode this week. Uh, I recently purchased a BFL fleece. Um, and I am absolutely thrilled with it. But we'll show you hear a lot about that in the episode. Anyways, I thought that would be really nice to show you how I have gone about cleaning this fleece. The fleece that we're going to be washing today. This is actually the only fleece that I have left on it, basically. Um, it is a gorgeous. This was a coated fleece, so there is very little uh, VM or veggie matter. Um, I might find one little speck of hay or a little random small twig or something like that in it. And, <clears throat> ever, you know, some people say, get all the veggie matter out before you wash it. Others say, don't worry about it. I say, if you can easily pick it out, go right ahead. Um, but if you're having, if you notice you try pulling it out and you're pulling the fiber with it and everything else, I say leave it at that point. Um, because it will come out when you card it or you, um, or you comb it, depending on, you know, what kind of prep you want to take. Um, it will most likely come out then. And also I've kind of found that once the lanolin is out of the fleece, it's oftentimes a bit easier to get that veggie matter out. Um, the lanolin kind of really makes it stick in there. Um, lanolin is very, it's a greasy, tacky type, um, type feeling. And, uh, and it, what it does is it actually protects the fiber. Um, so, in order to get rid of the lanolin, you need you need two things basically. You need hot water and a good scouring soap. And when I mean hot water, I don't mean um, you know, normal, standard tap water, hot level, hot water level. Um, my wa hot water tap is set to be at 160 degrees. That's hot. That's the type of hot water that you need to remove lanolin. And also, I have tried several different things. Um, so, you know, the lots of people say that you can use the original uh, Blue Dawn. Um, I don't recommend it. I, tr I bought it because scouring soap typically is a little bit on the expensive side and I needed to try to find a cheaper option. And so I tried it. I really did. I gave it lots of tries. I gave it lots of different type of tries. I hate it. Um, the reason being is because you cannot get it out. I truly did, like, it must have been about 10 rinses after one scour with this in it. And I was like, surely it's out by now. I mean, it has to be. Yeah, I'm seeing a few bubbles still, some soapy suds. But surely it has to be out. So I stopped rinsing the fiber. And it was... And after it dried overnight, it still had this tacky, soapy feel. The soap, it still was not out. So I really recommend not using Dawn, okay? Yes, it's cheaper. Yes, lots of people say, oh, it works wonderful. I'm being honest with you, okay? It does not work. Um, and it does not remove the grease. Um, my, my fleece was still greasy. It just, 
it doesn't work. It does not work as well, nearly as well. And quite honestly, you will end up using more money and more time in the process of all the water that you have to use and all this that you have to use. Just don't use it. It really doesn't work and it's not worth it. What I have found that works best for sheep fleece, okay? You also have alpaca fleeces, llama fleeces. Um, that's another matter. And actually, I'll go ahead and show that to you now. What I found that works for alpaca, not so much sheep. Yes, it recommends it for sheep, but I kind of found it doesn't cut it quite as well. Is this Kuka Kubura? Kookaburra scour. You can find this online. Um, I don't, and very few shops have it in store, um, but you can find it online. Uh, it's a very concentrated version, so it comes with a little measuring portion. And this is only, um, this is for half an ounce and one ounce, depending on the amount of fiber that you're washing at one time. This I found works wonderful for alpaca fleece. I recently uh, purchased and washed uh, an entire alpaca fleece. Um, and since alpaca doesn't have lanolin, you're essentially just removing the dirt, the dust, the, the, um, the urine, the, you know, all that dirty stuff. This works wonders. It got it extremely clean. Um, it worked very well. I did my basic of one scour and two rinses, and it was done. So this I recommend for alpaca. And actually, I'm, I'm going to be receiving another alpaca fleece shortly, and I will show you the process on this of how much I use for how much fiber and all that. So for sheep fleeces, because sheep, all sheep breeds carry lanolin in their coats. Depending on how much lanolin depends on the breed. Your finer wools, such as Cormo, Merino, Rambouillet, those type of breeds, you're going to have more grease than something like your medium or your long wools. Um, like BFL is a medium wool. It doesn't have as much grease um, as those, but it still has, it still has a bit. While your long wools like Winsleydale, your Lincolns, those have almost no fleece. Or, they have almost no lanolin. They're, um, so, um, so depending on how much, um, how much lanolin your fleece has, will depend on how much scour you use. Um, and this is Unicorn Power Scour. You can find it in lots of uh, shops that carry uh, spinning equipment and uh, fiber and things like that. A lot of them will carry this. Um, and this is truly the product that I find that works the best. Um, it, it is low suds, virtually after the second rinse, my fleece is clean, <coughs> but I do one extra rinse because I want that water to be clear, and I will show you that in this video, the process of what the water looks like from start to finish, um, and it leaves no extra residue, i.e. no extra tackiness like the Dawn um, and it, you really don't use that much. Why the Dawn I was having to pour and pour and pour. Um, this uh, for the amount of fleece that we're going to be washing here I'll only use about two pumps. Um, it's not you know and they're like really quick pumps it's not like one and two, it's just pop, pop. Um, so I don't even think that it's two full pumps. Um, so you don't have to use as much. It works extremely well. Um, and you'll see 
the end result of what this fleece will look like. Now this is a lamb's fleece, so the very tips won't get completely white. Okay, hopefully it focuses. Because, you know, it has that lamby um, residue, you know. So it won't be, the tips won't be completely white. But when I go through and I comb this flea, this fiber, um, for the next prep stage, that will disappear because it will become so blended in the rest of the fiber, which will be white, um, you virtually won't be able to see it. So, <coughs> I'm going to show you what I use. Now, I wanted to preserve the locks on this. If you don't want to preserve the locks on your fleece, by all means, take it and just, you know, take a bunch of it and put it in your sink or your pot or your bucket or your basin, whatever you're using, and just let it soak as is. But I wanted to preserve the locks. So before I started any type of washing of this fleece, I went through and separated all the locks and laid them out. Because I want to, I mean, these locks are absolutely stunning, even before washing. Um, let me see if I can separate some, because now they're kind of sticking together. Here we are. These locks are absolutely stunning. You see that? I mean, they're gorgeous. And I wanted to preserve that. And these are anywhere from six to seven inches long. Um, this was an absolutely gorgeous fleece, and I will be purchasing from this lady again. So, um, let's get started. Okay, so, to get a good view on this, you won't be able to see my face, you'll only be able to see my hands. Because um, I really want you guys to get a good view of what is going on in this. Okay, so, I have purchased small, basic laundry bags. These are the small ones. They come in small, medium, and large and I guess it's like sweater size and all that. These are just the small ones. <coughs> I have two of them. The other one I took, I just simply sewed once down and sewed once back up down the center. And I did that because I had a shorter fleece um, that was only three inches staple length. Um, and I wanted to be able to preserve those locks well, so I cut it shorter, but for this fleece, it actually works perfect for taking the fleece, and let me see if I can get this separated without messing up these locks. Um, Okay, I'm holding the end, okay, and because the locks are so long, they're obviously not going to fit uh, width-wise. So I'm going to put it in lengthwise, and it actually is a perfect fit for this, for, for this particular fleece. So I'm going to just stuff it in, holding the end so that they don't... Um, you know, get folded back, and then when I pull out, I'm going to hold those locks at the top, holding them, so again, I don't fold the locks as I'm pulling my hand out, okay, and to show you, okay, and I'm going to do the same on this other side, but <coughs> this way, it doesn't really hold as much fleece, um, this right here is probably only about an ounce worth of fleece that's left. Um, <clears throat> but there's not that much space in here. This is actually about the most that I want to pack this portion. Because you you don't want to stuff your bag so much um, that 
the scour and the water can't get in there and get in the middle and get it all clean and it and everything else and have it come come out as well you don't want it to sit in there and get settled and set on your fleece you want to get it off of there so this is full but as you can see there is still light oh, just a little bit if I just pull it apart some you could still see light coming through you see that so it's not it's not stuffed it's full but it's not stuffed what I also did because the <coughs> the fleece is so long <coughs> I took my second sweater laundry bag that I had and I lined it up widthwise like that and it actually that's that's exactly how long this sleeve is um now obviously i had it i had it filled from end to end um and the locks stayed put where they belonged and they stayed gorgeous and beautiful and um didn't get messed up in any shape or form so, now, so I'm going to just stuff this second little batch into my bag, again, holding the, the ends so that they don't get folded over. Some of it did get folded over, so I'm just fixing that with my thumb. And, and I can see that right here, some is a little bit just folded over, so I'm going to stick my hand back in there, hold the top, and I'm going to just try to straighten that one lock in there. Okay. So again, I could actually fill this side just a little bit more, but I'm out of fleece. <laughs> I have no more. So I'm, this is it. So, um, but see how it doesn't quite meet the end. You see that? How it doesn't quite meet the end over here. So it can fit just a little bit more. I could, I could probably fit a few more locks in there. <clears throat> and I'm just going to zip it shut without catching the fiber. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, again... I said that my water, my tap is set to be 160 degrees. So it is extremely hot. I have no insulated gloves. I am able to find any yet. Um, <clears throat> I know that they're out there. But until then, I just get to burn my hands. Um, if you don't have the that kind of hot water, you can always um, get some water, boil some water on your stove. Don't boil it but you can heat it up on your stove to the temperature that you want. And then you can pour it in here, or you can wash it directly on your stove. Um, but anyway, I also have a drainer. Even though this fiber is bagged, hair fiber can still kind of seep through those holes in a possibility. I haven't had it happen, but I don't want to destroy my drains. And if you don't bag, you definitely need um, a strainer for your sink. This I got at Bed Bath & Beyond for $2. Um, it's just a, a rubber one because our sink is an odd shape. Uh, it's, it's smaller than normal. So I wanted one that could fit several different sizes. And you're going to get that water hot. And the water is, the sink is full. Um, if I had more fleece, I would fill the sink higher. But this is very little fleece, so I don't want to fill this water too much, or else the soap won't be able to access the fleece. You want to try to keep your water and fleece ratio kind of a similar level. So, 
Um, if you notice, I haven't put the soap in yet. If I put the soap in before filling, or while I was filling, um, you'd have a whole, the sink would be full of suds. I don't want suds, okay? So I'm just going to put that in. And since there's so much extra space, I'm going to just add just a little extra squeeze. Okay, it's already kind of starting to mix, but I'm going to stick my finger in there. As you can see, this is very hot. I mean, it's, it's hot, you guys. It's really hot water. And I'm just going to, there we go. Okay. And also kind of the way that you tell that you have enough scour is that the water will feel just a little bit greasy um, it w or slick. That's how you know that you have enough. So I'm going to take my bag of fleece and I'm just going to lay it in flat. Okay. And I'm going to push it down. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'm going to just push it down, make sure that all of it gets in there, and I'm going to let it sit, and I'm going to set my timer for 30 minutes, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to let the soap and the water do the rest. I'm not going to swish it. I'm not going to agitate it. I'm not going to do anything to it. You put it in, you set it down. Make sure the fibers in there, you know, in the water completely and not just floating up on the top. And you let it be. Every, everything that is in this sink will do all the work for you. If you swish it or you, you know, aggravate it, agitate it, you will felt your fiber. Um, so just leave it alone, let it do its work, and we will see you in 30 minutes. Okay, guys. And first 30 minutes has passed. The alarm just went off. And as you can see, the water is a little bit cloudy. I don't know. Let's see if I can get it in just a little bit more. If you can see. Now normally, if there was more fleece in here, um, that water would be a muddy brown. But... Like I said, there's not that much fleece left to wash, and so, um, and so there's just there's not as much, but <clears throat> you can still see the grime in there. <coughs> Sorry. So all I'm gonna do, I just have a bowl. This is just a stainless steel bowl, um, <clears throat> and I just use this for my fiber project. So whether I'm dyeing or washing fleas or anything like that, um, this is all that this bowl is used for. So, again, this water is really hot. Um, it's cooled down just a little bit, but that's okay. And I'll explain that in a minute. Okay. So, I just folded this over gently um, just to make it a little bit easier to pick up and I'm just gonna because remember I want to preserve these locks okay if I wasn't wanting to do that then I just pick it up however and that be it but I want to preserve these locks as best as I can so I'm gonna take both hands I'm gonna lift it gently and it's gonna drain oh yeah now you can kind of see the water you see how Yucky it looks. Okay. And I'm just going to gently squeeze some of that excess out. I'm not going to worry about getting it all out because it, it's going right back in. And I'm just going to lay it in that bowl. And I'm going to drain the water. I mentioned just a moment ago that the water had just cooled down very slightly. Whew, that's good. Um, well, you want, it's okay, you don't want temperature change. That will also felt your fiber. But the exception is, if you go from cold to hot, 
you will not felt your fiber like you will if you go from hot to cold, okay? Um, the reason being is because if you, if you have an extra nasty fleece, okay, you want to soak that fiber in cold water to help open up those locks and those fibers and loosen that grime up. And then you will, while it is still wet, you will take that cold fiber and put it directly in scouring hot water. It will not felt. Because the cold and the cooler temperatures, it actually closes up those fibers. Okay, if you look at a fiber under a microscope, you'll see all these little scales along it. And that's what, those scales are what felt, okay? Or when you spin, those scales are what, um, what grab when you spin, all right? All right, there's enough water. Now, I'm not going to put any uh, soap in here because I'm going to just do two regular rinses. So, I have my fiber. I'm going to open it back up, okay? And I'm just going to lay it down gently. And I'm going to just let it sit. And set my timer again for 30 minutes. And we're back. So it's gone through its second bath. And I'm looking at the water. And it, although it's still fairly clear, there is just a little bit of cloudiness to it. And so what I'm going to do and as I move this, I still see that there's some suds. Or not suds, but there's still just a little bit of soap residue. So, I'm going to again fold it in half. And I'm going to lift it. And I'm going to squeeze it out. And put it into the bowl. And now that I've done that, you can see it's not so clear as you thought. So I'm going to let it drain. Fill your, your water, whatever you're using. You want to have enough in there that your fleece can float in there and maybe settle just a little bit, but you will still have a space underneath that fleece. You don't want it so low that your fleece is going to be sitting on the bottom because all that dirt and grime and grease and all that is going to fall to the bottom. And if your fleece is sitting there, then it's going to settle on your fleece and on your fiber. So you want to have enough in there that your fleece won't be settling on that bottom and you have the space. Got to lay this back in here, nice and flat. And I don't like it turning right towards. It. Okay, so again, I'm gonna let this sit for another 30 minutes. Start my timer. And after this 30 minutes, I'll show you the end result of what this fleece will look like after it's cleaned and after it's already dried. Um, It'll bloom and fluff and it's stunning. So, we're going to let this sit for another 30 minutes and then you will be able to see the end result of what your fleece should look like. Okay guys, so the last 30 minutes went by and as you can see, there is a difference in the water from the previous bath and it is completely clear. There's no extra residue, there's no fogginess, there's, there's virtually nothing in this water and that's what you want and that's how you can tell your fleece is clean, it's lanolin flea free, and it's, it's ready to be taken out of its bath. So, again, I'm going to just take this out. 
I'm going to lift it up and squeeze it. Okay. And as you can see, even after that, the water is still clear and clean. There's nothing in there. It's just to lay the fleece on a towel and roll it up. And since this is so little, I'm using just a smaller hand towel, but if I was doing a larger portion like I typically do, I use a full-size bath towel. And I'm just going to press. I'm not wringing it. I'm not, you know, scrunching it or anything like that. I'm just pressing it. That's all I'm doing. And this will just help get a little bit of the excess water out, which will help it dry faster. You don't have to do this, but it will dry quicker for you if you do. So, I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to take you over to where I lay my fleece down to dry, and I will sh open it up and show you the fleece there. So, I got my fleece here. Hold on. I'm trying to... Hold on. Okay. So, I got my fleece here, okay, and I got this drying rack. This is just a standard sweater drying rack. Um, I got it at, uh, I think I got it at Target, and it was only like $10 or so, and they're stackable. You want something like this, or a, you, you can let it outside on a skirting table or something. You just want something where the air can flow underneath as well as on the top. Um, you want to be able to have your fiber vent um, as it dries. When you are removing your fiber, careful not to catch it in the zipper like I just did. Okay. So, when you remove it, I have not seen this yet. Okay? I haven't opened this up, so you're, you're seeing this at the same time as I am. I kind of know what it's going to look like, just because I've done three other pounds of this. There is the first batch. Now remember how I said, the very tips, this is a lamb's fleece. Okay, this was a first shearing. Um, so, the very tips aren't going to get completely white, but they are clean. And you'll see after it dries the difference. Okay, so there's the first one. I'm just going to lay it on here on this drying rack. Really try not to get your fiber caught in your zipper when you unzip your bag. And here's the second one. Okay, you see that? Alright, I'm going to lay this on here. And since it's just a little bit cool um, weather-wise here, I have a just this heater, and I'm going to put the heater on just to help dry the fiber a little bit quicker. Otherwise, it's going to take several days to dry, and I don't want that. So <clears throat> I'm just going to let the heater be on for about half an hour or so just to get the first initial drying taken care of and then after that I'll let it be and by after about two hours it'll be completely dry but I wanted to show you after it is dry how stunning you see how I'll show you the difference it's flat kinda lifeless and then after it's completely dry, you see how it just poofs up and blooms. And the tips even kind of lighten up a little bit, as you can see. So I hope this has helped you all. And it, as you can see, this is all the washed fleece that I've done here. Um, and so, but I hope this has helped. And... Um, I'd love to see some fleeces that you all have washed or are in the process of washing. And if you all have any questions um, through the process, 
let me know and I'd be more than happy to help you out any way that I can. See you later guys.